Hi guys, over the last few weeks I've been emotionally and intellectually harassed and violated by some idiotic unethical Muslims who try and censor anyone who dares to expose their lies and deceit. Their dishonest and outright childish tactics has left me baffled, wondering how a human being in the 21st century can be this primitive, ignorant and uneducated. I know, I know they are Muslims and I'm fully aware that most Muslims are illiterate and only a small percentage are, like, you know, educated. But these people live in the UK and have an education for crying out loud. So why, why can't they use their brains for something useful? A, a Muslim living in some remote village on the slopes of some remote mountain can't be blamed for being illiterate and ignorant. A Muslim in Manchester having been to school and university can. So, <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so after this emotional intro, let me get back to facts, information and intellectual analysis. Let me, let me address some items regarding a thousand and one inventions. Now, the Muslims I'm talking about are people who work in several companies in the UK. Much like communist Russian propaganda was doing this like 40 years ago, they tried to mingle facts with half-truths and with primitive marketing to create the impression that Islam is modern and the basis for scientific discoveries in the past and thus the foundation of today's technological achievements. They are doing this by creating admittedly nicely designed exhibitions you know, with books, videos and activities which branch out into classrooms so that children are indoctrinated with their bullshit claims. Why, why do I call them bullshit claims? Because I can't find a more fitting expression while expressing my disgust over their despicable practice. I can't find any other expression. Now, over the last few years, I've addressed the claims by a thousand and one inventions and have exposed their lies and deceit bit by bit and claim by claim. I've shown what is a lie, why it is a lie and what reality shows to be the truth. And this has resulted in a thousand and one inventions changing some of their claims from, for example, Firnas flew to Firnas tried to fly. Yet, well, they keep their old diagrams and even bring out new ones, all showing how, <laughs> I don't know, one second free fall by a man covered in feathers, jumping off something high and almost dying in the process can be misrepresented as a man hanging underneath what humans in the 21st century would interpret as some sort of a hang glider soaring through the skies of Spain a thousand years ago. In their, in their claim, they state he flew to a significant height and hung in the air for more than 10 minutes before plummeting to the ground, breaking the wings and one of his vertebrae. <laughs> but now, was there a guy called Firnas? Sure. And was he a genius? Absolutely. Was he a Muslim? Arr, uh, this nobody knows. Did he fly using some sort of a contraption? No. So why not mention his work and his ideas in other areas? Because he was really a brilliant guy. On the pages of MuslimHeritage.com, he's described as a astrologer, astronomer, engineer and musician. Yet if you click on more information, you only get a paper with his achievements as the world's first pilot and, <laughs> and inventor of the ornithopter a construction similar to a bird. FSTC's Hassani refers to this paper on some site and the paper refers to the book by Hassani as a source. <clears throat> Don't these people have any integrity? <laughs> it's like anybody can upload stuff on there and then, then he calls it peer review and I, I don't know why. I don't know why people do this. And now, Lynn White, a professor for medieval studies at Princeton, Stanford and UCLA, explains a 9th century poet, Mukamim ibn Said, apparently came up with some satire 
mocking Ferner, saying he surpassed in velocity the flight of an ostrich, but he neglected to arm his body with the strength of a vulture. Now, this is a translation, but apparently this is what it sort of says. And that's all we have, okay? So, from, from this, Muslims are able to deduce that Fairness was a Muslim and invented a flying contraption of sorts, which allowed him to fly over Spain, and they're even able to reconstruct this contraption, a replica, as Thousand and One Inventions calls it. A replica of hearsay? A I mean, this is a blatant lie. And they know it's a lie. They've never produced any evidence to the contrary, other than some assertions by other Muslims, all based on a short, derisive poem. I mean, it's sheer desperation, mixing fantasy with fact. And here's another example before I move on. The paper. And this is how they work. In a, in a children's textbook, they state that Muslims started making paper 1100 years ago. They learned this from from Chinese prisoners. What Chinese prisoners were doing in Baghdad 1100 years ago is a totally different story. But they admit that Muslims simply copied what the Chinese, Indians, Egyptians, everybody else was already doing. And now it gets a bit creepy and shows what a dishonest bunch they are. They relabel the usage of other materials such as rags as, and now hold on, as recycling. I mean, it's like, like watching the Flintstones where modern concepts also projected into the Stone Age. <laughs> and the children's book now does a bait and switch as it claims that Muslims took their paper making techniques to many other parts of the world. In other words, Muslims simply take existing techniques, modify them a bit, and then when they conquer and colonize some more countries, then suddenly it's their technique, the Muslim technique. Now, what happened to copyright? What about trademarks and intellectual property? Not so important all of a sudden? <laughs> Why are these Muslims and a thousand and one inventions so dishonest and so full of this bullshit? Why, why this compulsive, almost pathological desire to stand out as being the first to do something or being part of a large number of equal-minded people? Where's the benefit? I mean, one of the biggest brains ever in the human species was Isaac Newton. Why, why would I care whether he was a Marxist or a Muslim? I, I read that he was apparently quite an asshole. And he, but he did great things and really contributed to the benefit of mankind and made groundbreaking advancements, discoveries. That is what is important. I mean, if he was left-handed, liked blue and had a mole on his cheek and it so happens all this is true for me too, does that make me anything like him? No. The people over at A Thousand and One Inventions seem to have this huge inferiority complex built in and a weak. They feel as though they are the victim and don't even realize what bullies they are and how many normal people who read this stuff simply laugh. Unfortunately, some politicians are not too clued up and are easily taken in by marketing messages and lies. And this is what a thousand and one inventions are good at, marketing. They are part of a group managed by Manchester-based FSTC, the Foundation for Science, Technology and Civilization, the holding company for Muslim Heritage, the Muslim Heritage Awareness Group, A Thousand and One Inventions, as well as CE4TF, the Curriculum Enrichment for the Future. They're not, they're not quite sure what to call their company, so you occasionally bump into a Curriculum Enrichment for the Common Era company. But clicking on that name only leads to an almost empty page, which says only page OK. No, <laughs> oh, well, they're also at odds when it comes to describing what it is that they're doing. As some pages say that people of different nations, ethnicity and belief systems contributed to the scientific development a thousand years ago. And then they have Muslims do this exclusively. Muslim scientists. Do Muslim scientists have a different approach towards bihydrogen monoxide or contradictory results when testing it compared to Maoist, Hindu or Mazdaki scientists? The president of FSTC, a, a non-profit company as you would expect, is a, a professor, 
Salim al Hassani, a mechanical engineer. He also wrote the book with all the magic claims which have turned out to be lies. The book which Klingshaw critiqued and made fun of in a video, which was taken down by a thousand and one inventions, also using an unlawful copyright claim. So then why is it they claim that their mission is to show that by means of cooperation and with a moral framework as guidance, everyone is capable of making great contributions to society? And then they lie and deceive. <laughs> Originally launched in the United Kingdom in 2006 in March, they claim that they are non-religious and an academic organization. What is an academic organization? What does that even mean? They claim they are working with the world's leading academics. What are leading academics? Don't they know what an academic is? They say a thousand and one inventions engages with the public through educational media and interactive global exhibitions. What is that? They have expos where kids can push buttons and move levers. How is that engaging with someone? If anyone dares comment, they block and ban them. They harass and deceive to censor others. That's not what engaging means. Engaging with is a two-way street, not just you listen what I have to say or else. Like they did with another critic who dared mention their company name and was told, I am now going through all your videos, a note where you have violated other people's copyright too. I will then bring this to their, i.e. the other company's attention, so they can report you to YouTube as well. If enough individuals report you, then your account will be permanently closed by YouTube. Now this shows that a thousand and one inventions will not shy away from blackmail to shut down critics. It's not the copyright they are protesting, but free speech. And they underline this mafia tactic by concluding, however, if you remove all references to a thousand and one inventions from your channel within the next two hours, then no further action will be taken. Now, this is in my eyes is, I mean, this is blatant and straightforward blackmail. And they close with an ominous, the choice is yours. I mean, this is, this is the message, all right? Publicly criticize a thousand and one inventions and you will be punished by illegal and unethical violation of your rights. They are, they are Muslims, all right? And don't want free speech and free society. This is, they're, they're bound to the Quran. They just want power and submission. They, they are the masters and we are the dhimmi. And this is what they think children need to learn at a very early age. That's what they're after. Okay. I've now looked at the company, the organizational structure, the activities, affiliations, goals, and claims. What I'm going to do now is provide my own like personal conclusion, and then go off and analyze their claims individually, dissecting their sources and then exposing their dishonest and deceptive tactics one by one. I will, I will look at their motto, discovering the past, inspiring a better future, and take them to task. If they lie, I will expose this. They want to mess with me, fine, but then they need more knowledgeable people, not like this do nade at 1001inventions.com person who is so incompetent it boggles the mind, who does not know the difference between copyright and trademark but is very good at blackmail, it seems. Instead of filing unlawful copyright claims, they should get an education and learn what honesty and fairness is. Thank you for your time.